Hi, I'm Josh Fishman, president and owner of A. Fishman & Son Diamonds in New York. Welcome back to our Ultimate Diamond Education Series, this clip dealing with diamond color, part two, the complexities involved in evaluating diamond color. In part one, which I hope you saw earlier, I discussed with you the basic diamond grading techniques and uh, educational information about color in diamonds. But that was simple. This video clip is going to present to you the complexities and the pitfalls that you can face when buying a diamond and dealing strictly with a certificate or with a seller who doesn't own his diamond and doesn't know what he's looking at because he doesn't have that diamond in front of him. So I'd like to proceed straight away with the complexities that are involved in diamond color grading. All color grades are not created equal and there are five major potential problems that you have to be aware of in buying a diamond and judging its color. First, there are variations in the application of the GIA grading standards by different gemological laboratories. Two, gemologists are human and they make mistakes in grading a diamond. Three, despite the color that's been given to the diamond, there may be tints in the color of a diamond which are not reflected in the color grade and which make that diamond undesirable. Four, fluorescence in a diamond, which is a characteristic seen when the diamond is shown under ultraviolet light, may impact the grade given to that diamond by the grader. And fifth, there can be haziness or cloudiness intrinsic to the diamond which is not reflected in the color grade and which may make that diamond undesirable. All of these factors, and I will discuss each one of them individually, makes it imperative that you buy your diamond from someone who can look at that diamond for you, not just from an internet retailer who has a list of diamonds and can't judge this for you. It makes all the difference in the world in whether you're getting the right diamond or not. While there is one standard of grading for diamond color, different laboratories apply those standards either more strictly or more leniently, as is proven from a comparison of diamonds from those laboratories. For example, the GIA is known to be the strictest grading laboratory. It takes a lot to get a diamond to be a certain color. The EGL, the European Gemological Laboratory, or the International Gemological Institute, the IGI, on the other hand, have reputations of being more lenient on color. So that, for example, a diamond which gets an H color from the GIA might get an F or a G color from the other laboratories. Similarly, a diamond which is an H color from the EGL or the IGI may very well and most likely will get an I or a J color from the GIA. So you cannot just compare diamond grades for their color on the certificate regardless of which laboratory it comes from and presume that you're getting the same diamond and that the lower price diamond with the same color is the better deal for you. You need expert help to judge whether the grade on the diamond is accurate or not accurate. Even the graders at the GIA that apply strict standards can make mistakes. They are human. And when a diamond is graded, overgraded to a higher color than it deserves, nobody's going to go to the GIA and correct them. But you as the consumer have to know whether or not that has happened with the diamond that you are considering. That is why you need, again, expert advice from an expert diamond tear who can guide you to understand whether the diamond you're looking at is a mistake by the GIA and that the color grade is too high or whether it is right and you're getting the right value. Because if the color has been overgraded, you'll be overpaying for that diamond 
and you won't know it until you go to sell that diamond and an expert tells you that. Sometimes a diamond has a certain tint to its color which may not be strong enough to affect the grade of the diamond but is still strong enough to affect its value. And when looking at that diamond you can often see sometimes a tint of brown or a tint of steely gray. It's in the material of the diamond, the crystal, and it may not Im impact the GIA grader's decision on what color grade to give it, but when an expert diamond tear looks at that diamond, they will see a difference and it becomes undesirable. You don't want an H color diamond with a tint of brown in it. You want a diamond without any tints, which is a true color, but for that you need expert guidance who can look at that diamond for you and assure you that that diamond is correctly graded. The presence of significant fluorescence, medium or strong, in a diamond can have an impact on the color grade given to that diamond because the color of that diamond would look better from the top. And a gemologist may be influenced to give that diamond a better color than it deserves from the proper way it should be graded from the back of the diamond. I have seen a J color diamond being given an H because of the medium blue fluorescence in it. Now the consequence of this is that the diamond will be overgraded. Now if the price of that diamond reflects the lower grade, then you're not paying more but you're being led to believe that you have a better diamond. And if the diamond is priced for the grade on the certificate, then you're overpaying because you are buying a diamond which has a certificate grade which is higher than it should have deserved. Once again, only an expert diamond tear can help you distinguish what's right and what's wrong with the color grade. Finally, the diamond's crystal may have a haziness or cloudiness in the natural material which is never going to be reflected in the diamond color grade. If a diamond even a colorless diamond, D, E, or F color, has such haziness or cloudiness, it is an undesirable diamond. The color grade will not tell you whether that is true or not. Only an expert diamond tear looking at that diamond can help you understand. So that's the story about diamond color. On the surface, a simple subject, and yet, as you've seen, quite complex. One that should give you pause to think about what you are buying from whom you are buying, what the certificate is, and that you should seek expert advice from a diamond tear who spends his own money buying diamonds. Please feel free to call me, get in touch with me if you're in the market for a diamond, or if you just need advice about a diamond that you may even be considering elsewhere. I'll be happy to assist you to the best of my ability. Until then, have a great day. We'll be back in touch with you about diamond clarity very soon. Bye-bye.